I invite you to please stand for our gospel reading today. We stand in respect to the Holy Gospel our Lord gives us through the Gospel writer John, who are reading the 21st chapter. This is our sermon text for today. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out. To fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out, and they got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals were there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Here ends the Gospel reading. Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. One of the handicaps of being the the new guy and getting out there, I don't know the congregation so well in the sense that I can look out and know who this sermon's really going to apply to in the sense of the greatest fishing story ever told. Because I know some of you enjoy fishing, but I don't know who really is the avid fisherman. I'll tell you right off the bat, I'm not. One of the things I lack is patience for that kind of thing. I love it when you can throw in the line and you catch a fish right away. But I would have been on that boat with those disciples that night complaining. How many times are you going to try this? It was a different kind of fishing back then, too. Understand, it wasn't throwing out a line. It wasn't dropping a line and trolling. They were casting. You know, there's so many unique clues in that gospel reading today. You see the disciples still working together. You see Peter. And you note how when John writes this account, how he he makes a note how Peter had taken off his outer garment, even though it was nighttime and they're out on the sea. But why? Because they were working hard. Because they were casting that net out, dragging it in, empty. Casting that net out, dragging it. You can just see Peter uh, taking off his outer garment, just working up a sweat. He's going to find fish because, remember, it was his idea to go fishing. And the other disciples that night had said, "Ah, we'll go with you. Oh, good call, Peter, right? So you just tell, I mean, he's throwing it out, he's pulling it all night long. That morning, they're working their way back in. There's a man out on the shore. Hey, friends, you catch any fish? Not a one. Hey, put it on the right side of the boat. John doesn't talk anything about the discussion in the boat. Was there any? You know, you just see these, are you kidding me? You know, or maybe it was something like, well, nothing else worked, let's give that a try. We don't know any of the discussion other than the fact that they listened. 
And they did it. And from there, guess what? We get to hear the greatest fishing story ever. Because those that fish always have stories. Again, I'm not an avid fisherman. I enjoy it. I especially enjoy it when we catch something. I mean, I, I still remember. I don't know if Mitch remembers this one or not. We, my first call was to Isabel, South Dakota. Little town. I've shared this before. 60 miles west of Mobridge. Isabel, town, 300 people, seven churches in the town. Not a lot of outreach going on. Most of the folks in that area knew where the churches were at. And if they wanted to be a church, they'd be a church. If they weren't at church and didn't belong to church, because they didn't want to. And this young pastor wasn't going to make them. One unique thing about Isabel was three miles north of town was Lake Isabel. It was more like a pond. But it had held, for the last seven years, the record largemouth bass. One afternoon, I think Steph's parents were visiting, and I think Mitch was along, and Travis, because Grandma was pretty upset, because Travis, Mitch's older brother, he jumped out of the truck when we got there right away, grabbed his pole. We weren't even out of the truck. He threw the line in, and smack, got a hit. And he pulled out a four- or five-pound bass. It was beautiful. And everybody got out so excited that this was going to be a great day. Not another fish caught. <laughs> There's other fishing stories. Steph and I had lunch Tuesday. And we were at that uh, Down Under that restaurant, and there were about five gentlemen out on the dock fishing. We just thought we'd say hi, five older guys hanging out. Well, we had some fishing stories from them. We, we walked in for lunch, came back out, and they said, you missed it. Bang, bang. Two hits right away. Big fish. Broke our lines. We're like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So those are all fishing stories, right? And I'm sure you have others to relate. But today, the Lord comes to us really with the greatest fishing story ever. And what makes it great isn't the fact that they caught 153 fish in this net. That's a big catch. And just that little side note, why 153? Please note, this isn't a 7, a 3, 144,000. This is not a symbolic significant number. This is just simply a fact here that we are being shared the truth. These men were impressed by this catch and they took it out and they counted and they said, we caught 153 fish in one cast. And that 153 just tells us this is not one of those stories. This really happened. This is the truth. But what makes it the greatest fishing story is everything that's surrounding there. We're three weeks into Easter. This is the third Sunday of Easter, but we're also in following the chronology of the, the days after that first Easter. This is the third week of Easter. The first two appearances that Jesus had done with the disciples were on Easter, and then the week later when Thomas got to touch Jesus' victory scars and exclaim, my God, my Lord. Now it's a week later. They're no longer hiding out in Jerusalem. Now they're back in Galilee. Because remember, that's what Jesus had told the women, go tell my brothers, I'll meet him in Galilee. So they went up to Galilee. Now they're back in their home territory. Now they're going to kind of see what's happening. But they're getting back to life, their lives. And they had been fishermen. Instead of just sitting around twiddling their thumbs, Peter said, I'm going to go fishing. That's significant. That's significant, right? Friends, the writer of the Hebrews tells us to do what we're doing right now. Don't give up meeting together. Gather together to encourage each other. Spur one another on towards love and good deeds. God's desire is for us to regularly come together, to gather together, to join our hearts in, in worship and praise to come together. But being a Christian today isn't about just sitting here. 
just coming here every day and sitting in worship and just gathering. No, we have lives to live, and God wants us to live those lives. But what He doesn't want, just as He didn't want with the disciples, is to hang up our Christianity when we hang up our name badges on our picture board and walk out and pretend we're not a Christian the rest of the week. No, He's with us, just as He was with those disciples. Because He cares. Our risen Savior cares about us each and every day of our lives. Yes, yes. The Lord is smiling when we come together and we join our hearts and we give our best in our Sunday worship. We look at those verses, and even in the back of our head we're saying, I'm not much of a singer, but others are singing around me, so I'm going to give it a try. The Lord rejoices. Right? This isn't an uh, an audition for who's got talent or American Idol or anything like that. This is Christians coming together to praise our Lord and give it our best. So we open our mouths and we sing and the Lord's happy about that. But He also wants us to be happy and know He's watching over us because He's concerned about us. He was concerned about the disciples. He didn't tell them to go fishing. They went and did that on themselves. But they were getting back into their regular routine and he shows his concern. And in doing so, the risen Savior gives them the right advice. Brothers, I know this goes against all norm. I know you're tired, but try putting the net on the right side of the boat. Wham! Right? He gives us that right advice today also. This amazing fishing story teaches us that our loving Lord is there concerned about us, concerned about our day-to-day lives, and He's there to guide us and direct us. And, And the words are there. In the Holy Bible, the words are there to guide us, to encourage us, to remind us. Yeah, speak the truth. Speak the truth in, in love, showing kindness, compassion. Right? Speak the truth, show truth, live truth. But do it in a way that shows kindness. Do it in a way that shows generosity. Do it in a way that shows compassion and care for those around you. We speak the truth in love. Yeah, guess what? My neighbor's having a bad day and he slaps you on the cheek. Give him the other cheek, Jesus says. He's given us the right kind of advice to live in this world. To help us to cope. Why? Because Satan is there every day also trying to drag us down. He's there trying to pull us down into the depths. The meanness, the ugliness, the wickedness of this world. And the Lord sees it. Our risen Savior sees us and knows us and He cares about us and He comes to us with His Word and He gives us the best advice. The right advice, just as He did the disciples. He knows what He's talking about. Friends, our Savior knows what He's talking about for various reasons. First and foremost, He's God. He's perfect. He knows everything perfectly. On top of that, He's been here. Right? He humbled Himself. He lowered Himself. He set His divine power and ability, His divine character, all the realm of His divine godliness. He, he set that to the side. And He became a real man and He lived here. He knows what it's like better than any of us will. He knows the challenge. He knows the struggles. And he knows the temptations. Because you have to know, Satan was going after him every day of his life. Because all Satan needed was him to just slip up one little time. One tiny little stumble. And Satan would have won. But that didn't happen to Jesus. He endured. And he lived perfectly. So does he know... The kind of advice that we need, the guidance, direction to understand how to put one foot in front of another here on earth. How to keep God the Father number one. To trust His plan and His will even when there are times it just doesn't make sense. 
Yeah, He does. He does, and He encourages us. And He gives us the right advice. And most importantly, He provides abundant help, right? Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. I mean, let's get back to that fishing story. What a deal. What a great deal. These guys are out fishing all night. They're probably fishing for their own food, their own meal, maybe to supply their, their, their family. They've had a rough couple of weeks. That wasn't vacation time down in Jerusalem. They, they, they were serving and their, 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 their life's been turned upside down and, and now they've got to come back and they need to collect things. And look at the incredible abundant help the Lord provides for them. First of all, an incredible catch, which as night was ending and morning was starting, all they were thinking of is how tired they were and how empty their stomachs were and how empty their family stomachs were going to be. And all of a sudden, they've got this incredible catch of fish. And then on top of it, when they do get to shore, there's already a meal waiting for them. Right? When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. What a breakfast meal. Prepared by their Savior, offering them this help. Come and have breakfast, Jesus said to them. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. What a story. What an incredible true story that shows Jesus' concern, the best advice, and the help he offered to those disciples, both spiritually and physically. And it's no different for us. Our risen Savior is there caring for us. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about everything you're going through. He understands your challenges, your trials, your battles. He knows and He cares. And He's there to give you the right advice. He speaks to us every day, friends. That Bible is alive and living, powerful and effective. And it's the best advice any of us can ever get. It's the right advice. And the help? A peace. A peace which surpasses all understanding is ours. Even today. To be at peace because our risen Savior loves us. Our risen Savior has saved us. And our risen Savior says that, yeah, there will be that incredible banquet waiting for us in heaven. But right now, He's also with us, providing, guiding, blessing us. And that comfort us. May us give us that, that joy so that we also, too, exclaim with those same angels that John saw in his vision, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen.